Warning, cheaters may contain adult themes and strong language. Parents are cautioned that this program may not be suitable for children. Coming up on this episode of Cheaters. I don't have to explain what's going on to you. She's with one of the gentlemen that we observed her with on two of these days of investigation. Uh, what are you doing here? I've had them following you since November. From Cheaters surveillance cameras, you are about to view actual true stories filmed live, documenting the pain of a spouse or lover caused by infidelity. This program is both dedicated to the faithful and presented to the false-hearted to encourage their renewal of temperance and virtue. You can feel in your heart when something's not right. No other woman has made me feel the way she does. I'm lost. I feel like I'm by myself. I just can't take the lies. I know this is upsetting. We met the same young lady. I have to know the truth. I knew he was a dog and I don't get him. Let's make this happen again. Yeah. 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 Cheaters Detective Agency's private eyes on Cheaters. Hello, I'm Joey Greco. Welcome to another episode of Cheaters. Please meet Greg Stevens, a family man growing weary of his wife's late night antics. Hoping to salvage over two decades of marriage, Greg contacts the professionals at Cheaters. Greg Stevens, age 48. A sales rep worried that his wife no longer honors the sanctity of their marriage. Now, we had a, a good marriage. You know, had its ups and downs, job changes, and expenses grew with the kids. But uh, we got a house, our first year of marriage. And uh, we were in it for uh, about 17 years before we bought this big one. We had a custom built, house built. And, um, just a normal marriage, you know, ups and downs. She started working at the ballpark, suite attendant. And then all of a sudden, I noticed her starting to get, well, she started wearing thongs. And then she started doing the full body tan. And then the game would be over 10, but then she wouldn't get home to two or three. Then uh, she'd call me up and say, oh, out uh, having drinks with the girls. Maybe I'm wrong. So I said, well, let's just find out, because she's made the statement several times. Have somebody follow me. They'll show you I'm not doing a thing. You know, you're going to feel pretty stupid. So I'm like, OK, since she's always popping up saying that, I figure I'd have it checked out. You know, and if I'm wrong, then I'm wrong, you know? And I'll shut up. But if I'm right, then I'm going to have to wonder, the whole 27 years I've been accusing, have I been right? If you suspect infidelity in your relationship, Cheaters licensed investigators may be able to provide you assistance. Exercise your right to be informed. Identity withheld, age 44. An usher suspected of leaving her family in the dark concerning her late night avocations. Investigation day three. Cheaters inspectors dispatch field agents to the home Greg shares with his wife and three children. After several hours, investigators finally spot the suspect as she prepares to leave for the evening. Cautious in their pursuit, Cheaters PIs tail the suspect to a popular country and western bar. The adventurous wife and mother waits in her car for several minutes until a dark sports car arrives on the scene. Wasting no time, the suspect, whose identity is withheld, humps right into the unknown vehicle. Mobile units maintain their position at the dance hall for several hours. As the evening winds down, Cheater's agents watch as the mysterious sports car approaches. The suspect exits the vehicle and walks to her awaiting SUV. But this time, an unknown gentleman assists her to her vehicle. Not willing to let the party end, the unidentified fellow gets a little fresh as the suspect playfully declines his drunken advances. 
Realizing that on this particular night, his pitch will be met with some resistance, the unknown gentleman finally retreats for the evening. Greg's wife returns home, where she douses her husband with more lies. Investigation Day 7. Cheater's intel notices activity outside the Stevens' home, and shortly after sunset, stationed field agents spot the suspect slowly backing out of her driveway. Several miles up the road, her journey comes to an end at a low-profile restaurant and bar. As if late for a date, the suspect rushes inside and takes a seat at the bar right next to an unidentified gentleman. Cheater's PIs press on to determine the exact nature of this relationship. It doesn't take long to conclude that these two are more than just friends. The suspect leans over and smooches with her delighted companion. After enjoying their cocktails, the suspect and company head for the parking lot, each advancing to his own vehicle. But evidently, the evening's action is just about to begin. Cheater's agents follow the couple several blocks away to a local motel known for its discreet accommodations. Accompanied by her male companion, the suspect disappears behind closed doors for the remainder of the evening. Investigation Day 11. Determined to compile ample evidence, Cheater sends out mobile units to follow the suspect just after she leaves her residence. In a matter of minutes, she arrives at a parking lot where an unknown individual in a familiar vehicle awaits her arrival. Recognizing the sports car from day three of the investigation, Cheater's sleuths remain vigilant as the suspect parks her vehicle and hops into the gentleman's automobile. After a lengthy pursuit, the suspect and her companion pull into a popular night spot. The suspect and her companion, whose identity remains withheld, take a seat near the busy bar and amorously begin carrying on. Meanwhile, Greg is treated to endless fabrications from his beloved wife, as evidenced in this recorded phone call. You going out tonight? Just depends. I'm not gonna like go out now. If I did, I'd just go have a few drinks. Be pretty stressed about things lately, and she's like come have a beer with me. So. Who does have a beer at? Her place? Oh, I thought we were just gonna go sit in the car. She can't yeah. go with them. You know, there's not too many places that serve her. We find places that will. She just wanted me to bring a couple beers out of the refrigerator. Well, if I did, I wouldn't be out late. Probably like midnight or something. Can we better than that? Oh, let's see who that was. Okay. With infidelity confirmed many times over, Cheater's intelligence ends the investigation ready to present their findings. Coming up, the confrontation. With clear evidence of betrayal caught on tape, Cheater's prepares to disclose all findings to Greg. Vexed by his wife's disquieting behavior, Greg sets forth to discover the motivation behind her lies. Greg, thanks for being with us tonight. Are you ready to take a look at some of the information that our investigators have gathered? Yes. <clears throat> Greg, on this day, we had a detective outside of your home. They were able to observe leaving. She was followed until she arrived at a bar. After exiting the vehicle, she enters the bar, and after quite some time, is seen leaving and getting into the car of a gentleman. They drive off. The detective was not able to keep up with them at that point. He stayed at the bar where she left her vehicle. When they returned, this gentleman dropped her off. There was a moment or two before she got into the car. They each went their separate ways from that standpoint. On this day, Anne was observed leaving your home. She was followed until she arrived at a bar where she's met by another gentleman. They're sitting inside sharing some drinks. I don't have to explain what's going on to you. After some time, they did leave that bar. They each got into their own vehicle and were followed until they arrived at a hotel. <sighs> on this day, Greg, again was followed until she arrived 
at the same bar that she went on the initial day of the investigation. She's met outside by a gentleman. They were followed to a bar, shared some drinks, were followed back to where she left her car. This gentleman gets in to the passenger side and then goes around and gets into the passenger side as well. And after quite some time, he's seen exiting and she gets into her car okay. and they each drive off. Now I know, Greg, these are things that you kind of suspected that were going on. We've done one of the things that you've asked us to, and that is find out what is going on behind your back that you weren't able to. But we can also provide you with something else, and that's an opportunity to confront face to face and ask her what her intentions were, and is this her idea of trying to work on your marriage together? Would you like to do that? You sure would. Okay. okay I'm just going to check with the detective and find out what their exact location is. Gomez, what do you have? Okay. We're loading up right now. We're headed over. All right. Okay. They're in the bar. They're just they're having a beer. They've been there about 30, 45 minutes. You ready to go? Mm -hmm. All right, this way. Don't miss. Take a left on Orn. All right, bail out. Come out this side. That's it. Place. 
You've been alone for a long time. Mm hmm. And getting grilled more and more and more about needing more money and I ain't doing this right, I ain't doing that right. Constantly grilling me. Only to find out in the evening she goes and have fun with someone else. From this point on, you know you'll be going forward alone. Save your family. Save from your family, but at least with a different set of circumstances. Mm -hmm. What's going to help you continue? I'm just going to keep working hard and providing for my kids. After the confrontation, Greg weighs all options before deciding what to do with his fractured marriage. Stay tuned as Cheaters announces his aspirations for the coming months. But now, Cheaters welcomes back Will Montgomery. Will voluntarily comes on down to speak candidly, reliving the day he was confronted by cheaters. Will Montgomery, age 24. Will explains his theory concerning one of the most embarrassing situations in his life. I'm not married, you know. I've had other women before her anyway, you know. But it's just the fact that my girlfriend never found out about those things. And this time, I got caught. What's going on? What the f are you doing? I'm working out, man. Doing what? Working your mouth? I just went like that putting rain. hands on booties now? To be honest, we had an exclusive relationship. I mean, we lived together. You know, that's, that's pretty close. Uh, she had talked about getting married before, you know, and me being a man, I went along with it only because she was my girlfriend and she's been taking care of me, you know, for the last several months. So I was basically just living a lie. You giving her money? You giving her my money? Are you listening? Will, do you hear me? Will, don't roll. What the hell are you doing? Run it, run it. After it all started, after I was sitting up in that tree, I pretty much knew it was all over. Uh, there were several cameras out there. I know I've seen cheaters before. I didn't expect for her to stay with me after everybody seen this and maybe her friends telling her this and telling her that. So I basically knew that it was over. So we 10 now, we want to climb I'm tired, man. You, I don't feel like doing this. If you want to run up a tree, you wouldn't be tired. Can you come down and talk? Will. Let's get oh, one side some room. All right, let's back off for a second. Uh, look, look, look. Damn, say, me. man. I don't know already. I don't look at all these people out here. What? You worry about camera people. Why are you up in the tree? Why did you just be honest? When you think about it, everything happens for the best. You know, don't nothing happen that's not supposed to happen. She kicked me out, but now I'm I'm on my feet. I found me a job. I'm working. She not paying my bills no more. I'm paying them. You know, I got me a place. I've moved on. I haven't necessarily talked to her to see if she's moved on or found someone else or anything, but I'm young. I mean, there's gonna be other women out there. I'm not, I'm not tripping on that. With many things to consider, Greg Stevens says his number one concern is to end his marriage in the most cordial manner possible. Even though he believes his children will initially suffer from the breakup, Greg knows that ultimately everyone will benefit. Keeping the conversation short, the suspect in the case admits her culpability, but says there's much more than just one side of the story. She declares that over time, Greg became distant and focused most of his time and effort on the children. The suspect's companion maintains that a woman like Greg's wife needs to be held up on a pedestal. Despite her marital status and family obligations, he invites Greg's wife to share his company anytime and has no remorse for his actions.
Now remember, if you don't get your programming from Goldstein's, why we'll both lose money. Warning, cheaters may contain adult themes and strong language. Parents are cautioned that this program may not be suitable for children. Coming up on this episode of Cheaters. You can see their body language mm. as they leave. Oh my God, I cannot believe this. Craig? So what is this? Can you explain? Who the f is this, Craig? Yo, who the f is from cheater surveillance cameras, you are about to view actual true stories filmed live, documenting the pain of a spouse or lover caused by infidelity. This program is both dedicated to the faithful and presented to the false-hearted to encourage their renewal of temperance and virtue. You can feel in your heart when something's not right. No other woman has made me feel the way she does. I'm lost. I feel like I'm by myself. I just can't take the lies. I know this is upsetting. agency's private eyes on cheaters hello i'm joey greco thank you for watching this episode of cheaters please meet star jacoby an affable young woman upset with her boyfriend's recent attitude shift needing confirmation of his commitment star joins forces with cheaters to dig up the truth star jacoby age 26 a bank teller worried that her boyfriend is becoming distant at a time when she needs him the most. Well, when I first met Craig, I was working at a recreation center. And he used to come up there daily with two little boys and play basketball with them. Just, you know, show the kids a good time. And I really like to see that. I would like to see a man do that with kids, for one. And I also had doubts that when I first met him that he was a player or whatever. But I did still took that chance to go out with him and see what type of person he was. It's a lot of a lot of things that he does is different from his actions. A lot of things he says is different from his actions. Um, like on one particular day, we were supposed to be going to the movies and we had been up playing this like a week ahead. And the day we were supposed to be going to the movies, I called him, you know, to make sure that we were still going to do that. And it was a change of plans. And which that's not like Craig. He doesn't do any type of change of plans if it's concerning me and him going out on a date or spending any type of quality time together. I just want to be wrong in this situation. I don't want to have these type of doubts at all. And hopefully I am wrong because this is the man I want to spend the rest of my life with. If you suspect infidelity in your relationship, cheaters licensed investigators may be able to provide you assistance. Exercise your right to be informed. age 31. A webmaster suspected of emotionally abandoning his girlfriend during a stressful time in her life. Investigation day two. Cheaters reviews all the case facts before sending out field inspectors to the home star Jacoby shares with the suspect. After many hours, a shadowy figure appears from the abode positively identified as Craig Boggs. Suspect Boggs eagerly makes his way toward his vehicle, and as he approaches, the silhouetted figure of a restless unknown woman can be seen patiently anticipating his arrival. The two enter Suspect Boggs' automobile and finally leave the scene. Suspect Boggs surprises his companion with a quick trip around the corner to a quaint cocktail lounge. Suspect Boggs picks up the bill and claims his reward in the form of a long, passionate hug with his affectionate companion. After securing his lady in the car, the couple departs, evading Cheater's mobile units in the process. Investigation Day 5. 
Back on the case and ready for action, Jeter's PIs catch up with suspect Boggs just after he leaves his and complainant Star's residence. After a lengthy trek across town, suspect Boggs finally ends the trip at an apartment complex. He leaves his car running to retrieve an unknown individual at the location. Moments later, they're off on a quick trip to a nearby bowling alley, forcing operatives to infiltrate the establishment for a closer look. As suspect Boggs and company play around a pool, Cheaters identifies the woman positively as one Peaches McDaniel. After wrapping up the game, suspect Boggs and companion McDaniel get up close and personal for the long walk back to their vehicle. Pulling out all the stops in an attempt to impress Ms. McDaniel, suspect Boggs pours on the charm at a cocktail lounge. Once they are seated at the main bar, suspect Boggs engages his unsuspecting date with a whisper and gentle kisses on the ears and neck. Many drinks later, the duo finally exits the establishment and drives back to Companion McDaniel's residence. The two continue their long goodbye as Suspect McDaniel half-heartedly attempts to send Suspect Boggs home to an awaiting star. Investigation Day 7. With luck on their side, Cheater's agents again find Suspect Boggs sneaking out of the residence he shares with his girlfriend, Star. Noticing the familiar pattern, Cheater sleuths anticipate his final destination is Companion McDaniel's apartment complex. Suspect Boggs indeed arrives and walks up the sidewalk to pick up his date for the evening. On the flip side, Star gets another taste of what it's like to be lied to as recorded in this phone call with her so-called boyfriend. Hello. Determined to end the madness, Cheaters withdraws all agents to carefully review the evidence. Coming up, the confrontation. With multiple offenses documented, Cheaters moves to warn Star of the unfortunate results. Ready to begin her life with eyes wide open, Star sets aside her apprehension to study the evidence. Star, thanks for being here tonight. I know that uh, you've had some concerns about what was happening in a relationship over the last few months. The reason that we did have you come out this evening is that our detectives do have some information that we thought it was important for you to see. Are you ready to take a look at that? Yes. As the investigation starts, we had a detective outside of Craig's residence. On this particular evening, Craig was observed leaving his apartment with this young lady. They traveled to a bar where you can see them inside, and I'm, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I know you didn't expect that. Mm -hmm. So there you do see them in an embrace after some time they get back in the car our detective did lose them at that point now on this day in the investigation craig was observed leaving his home he travels to a residence picks up this young lady takes her to a bowling alley but they did go inside and spend some time shooting pool and again, you can see their body language yeah. as they leave. Yeah. It's pretty clear to me. Once they depart, he takes her to another restaurant. And our detective did get inside on this occasion. And again, you can see. Oh, my God. I cannot believe this. You can see the gestures that he's making. Yeah. He brings her home, but before she gets out, 
to go inside. She leans in and obviously gives him, it seems that she gives him a kiss. On this day star, we had a detective again outside of Craig's apartment. He's followed and goes to the home of the same young lady. They're not in there very long before they depart and are followed to a restaurant. He opens the door for her as they leave. Craig does bring her home, but on this occasion, instead of dropping her off and leaving, he goes inside. And I know that's not what you want to say. It's not right. This is not right. Oh, God. So dark. I know how you feel. I can understand how you feel. Yes. Where is Craig right now? He's out of town. He went to Houston with his job. When was he going to arrive back in town? He's supposed to be back today, sometime tonight. Were you going to pick Craig up at the airport? Well, I had called and asked him. He told me he was going to just take a taxi home. Star. When Craig left town, our detectives followed him to the airport. And we know that when he left, this young lady was with him. You're gonna be all right. You're gonna be okay. Let me check with the detective. Yeah, we just finished a briefing. What are you looking like on your side? Okay. We just finished up, so we're just gonna load up and come over right now. Perfect. All right, we'll see you in a second. Ready to go? Yes. All right, come this way. Perfect. Yeah. She's right up there at the baggage claim right now. There's the detective that's on site right now. Okay. All right. We're just pulling in right now to the terminal. You're heading towards the door right now? All right. Stop and then go through on the right. Look on the right. They're coming out right now. All right. Look to your right. They're there right there. Okay, you ready? Stop. Craig? So what is this? Can you explain? Who the is this, Craig? Start down. 
the officers are okay with us giving you a ride home, if you guys can have a conversation. Okay. Okay. We don't want to get out of hand, but but we want you to be truthful. Okay. 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 Come on, Greg. Yeah, we are almost went to jail behind your your. So what it's gonna take for us to whip this around then? I don't I don't know. I don't have a clue in my head. How long have you been seeing Craig? Did you have any suspicions that he was still seeing someone? No. It's been all this time with me. How long has that been? Well the first step. Craig is to have a desire, a sincere desire, to work it out. I do whatever it takes. You know, I'm hanging in here for as long as I can, for as long as it takes. You know, as long as it takes to show you, hey, I do care about you. If you could say something to Craig right now, what would it be? And don't call me out. You're not willing to reconcile. No, me? for what? Right now, the way I'm feeling is just that I'm not ready right now. All thing we can do is take it one day at a time, if anything. After the confrontation, Star begins the healing process. Stay tuned as Cheater spotlights her outlook for the future. But next, Cheaters presents Denise Pennington. Denise returns to discuss her part in the confrontation and the betrayal of her trusting friend. Denise Pennington, age 33. Denise stops by to offer her recollections of the evening she was caught with her best friend's fiance. I was just blown away that she called cheaters. I don't know if, I mean, she didn't, she didn't come to me first. She didn't talk to me about it. I mean, I knew she had some concerns about him and if they were really gonna work out and, and how devoted he was to her, but I had no idea. I would have never, ever thought she would have gone so far as to hire a private investigator. Oh, well, well, do this to me. No. You know what I mean? No, no. We just got engaged two months ago. You know that. How the f hell could you do this to me? Do you have a reason why you do this to you? Get over here now. Explain okay, something right. to me. Right. We were so close. All of us were so close, and it just, you know, things happened with him one night, and yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, I felt bad, of course, but it just didn't seem like, you know, I guess I just sort of justified it in my head that I wasn't really hurting anybody, that it wasn't going to play out like that anyways. <laughs> I just can't I, understand how you would do this to me. I didn't, mean I, to get, I didn't mean for you to get hurt. I, didn't, I, mean, I don't know what to do anymore. I just want to go. Listen, I just want to go. Don't run away. Listen. I just want to go. Please, I'm sorry. It's not around. I'm sorry, but I can't do this. I can't do this anymore. Please, please. please. You're making me sick. Anywhere but here. You're making me sick. I mean, and looking back, I, I know that they weren't right together. And my role in that was, was horrible, but she should know that I, that I love her. I mean, it, you know, if she were watching right now, Trisha, if you're watching right now, you know, I love you. I would never do anything knowingly to hurt you. You want to run away and not talk about it? Look, you know what? You, you. Stop. I don't care. Where's she going? I would say that nothing is more important than friendship. If you have a best friend, that you love and cherish, don't ever do anything to mess that up. This is nothing that's worth it, nothing at all. Money, men, just nothing at all is more important than that. If you have that with somebody, you should cherish it and, and honor it. Still angered by Mr. Bach's treatment, Star Jacoby vows to rethink her original decision to give him a second chance. With a surveillance footage seared into her brain, Star says it'll take a miracle to undo the damage caused by Mr. Bach's gross mishandling of their relationship. Shocked by the surprise visit from Star and the cheater's camera crew, Mr. Bach says the ambush was unnecessary and would like to clear his name. 
From his viewpoint, Mr. Boggs assumed that he and Starr had an open relationship with the option of befriending members of the opposite sex. For her part, Peaches McDaniel claims that Starr was lucky to have a crew around to protect her. Testing her patience, Ms. McDaniel says being spoken to in a disrespectful manner always causes her to react in a less than cordial way. Ms. McDaniel states that she will not indulge in any further comment regarding her involvement in the case. Warning, cheaters may contain adult themes and strong language. Parents are cautioned that this program may not be suitable for children. Coming up on this episode of Cheaters. Bella does lean in. Give this gentleman a kiss on the side of the neck. This gentleman has a warrant out for his arrest. What the hell's going on here? This is bull- oh, Maybe you shouldn't have been having sex with a criminal. From Cheater Surveillance Cameras, you are about to view actual true stories filmed live, documenting the pain of a spouse or lover caused by infidelity. This program is both dedicated to the faithful and presented to the false-hearted to encourage their renewal of temperance and virtue. You can feel in your heart when something's not right. No other woman has made me feel the way she does. I'm lost. I feel like I'm by myself. I just can't take the lies. I know this is upsetting. private eyes on cheaters welcome i'm joey greco thanks for joining me on another episode of cheaters please meet john belzik a gentleman concerned that his wife seeks out other sources of affection saddened by her lack of emotional support john asks cheaters to verify his suspicions john belzik age 27 a cable technician who suspects that his wife uses her pregnancy as an excuse for being sexually distant. Well, two and a half years ago, I uh, looked into Bella's eyes and I said, I do. And uh, it was the happiest moment of my life. I mean, it was fantastic. Um, I, I love her uh, more than I can, you know, even bear. Uh, of course, she's, uh, she's pregnant. She's uh, five months pregnant. Uh, we don't know what it is yet, but uh, we're really looking forward to finding out. She wants to know, but uh, I want to kind of leave it up to a surprise. I do feel like something's changed in the relationship. I feel like uh, she's become distant. Uh, uh, seems like uh, cold at times, um, short with me. Uh, I've definitely noticed a difference in the way she, uh, the little things, um, the way she acts, uh, things she says to me. I feel like uh, maybe she doesn't love me anymore. Maybe she maybe she doesn't want to be with me anymore. I don't know. Um, that's the way it feels, and uh, I'd like to get some answers for sure. If you suspect infidelity in your relationship, cheaters licensed investigators may be able to provide you assistance. Exercise your right to be informed.
Bella Belzik, age 27. A nurse suspected of setting aside her husband's feelings to focus on the needs of another man. Investigation day three. Anticipating possible movement, Cheater's Intelligence dispatch field agents to the suspect's workplace. As the day winds down, Cheater's cameras capture a glimpse of suspect Bella Belzik as she exits the clinic. Moments later, an unrecognized driver offers suspect Belzik a lift. Curious as to their destination, Cheater's mobile units pursue the duo as they make their journey. A few miles ahead, the two arrive at the home suspect Belzik shares with John. Cheater's PIs watch closely as suspect Belzik invites the unidentified companion inside. With John away at a dependency clinic, suspect Belzik appears quite comfortable entertaining guests. Sometime later, the couple returns with John's dogs in tow. Suspect Belzik shuffles the canines into her companion's vehicle and they leave the residence. Opting for an afternoon at the park, suspect Belzik and company wander down to the creek where the dogs can explore the vegetation. Enjoying the beautiful scenery for some time, suspect Belzik and friends finally wrap things up and take to the road. With the day's errands run, suspect Belzik hugs her companion before the two part ways. Investigation day six. Cheater's operatives theorize that while John undergoes treatment miles away, suspect Belzik may take advantage of the situation. Their intuition proves accurate as a familiar white truck pulls into the couple's driveway. Suspect Belzik's companion, whose identity remains withheld, arrives to pick up his date. Ready for a night on the town, the two immediately proceed to cruise down the boulevard. The chivalrous companion offers to buy the lady a four-course dinner. Moments after ordering the steak and lobster combo, suspect Belzik finally rewards her companion with a hug. With great appreciation, the courteous gentleman soaks up the attention showered on him by suspect Belzik. A while later, the duo departs the restaurant and returns to suspect Belzik's house. The ever compliant companion follows his woman through the front door. Hours later, after completing her to-do list, suspect Belzik sends her companion home. Investigation day nine. Banking on another meeting, Cheater's PIs wait for hours on end at Suspect Belzik's place of residence. Adding to their cause for concern, Cheater's detectives discover that Suspect Belzik's companion has multiple outstanding warrants. Mrs. Belzik exits her home, anticipating her companion's arrival. Once again, the gentle fugitive must earn his keep by running Suspect Belzik around to take care of errands. This time, she raises the bar and instructs him to drive to an expensive furniture store. Suspect Belzik and company spend quite some time browsing the living room sets, and any semblance of respect for her husband is quashed in this recorded telephone call. Hello? Hey, girl, what's up? Oh, not much. How have you been doing? I'm holding up pretty good. I'm hanging in there. How are you doing? Oh, I guess I'm doing pretty good. I'm still working pretty hard. It's getting a little rough, so I'm going to take my maternity leave next week. Well, that's good. I'm sorry I, uh, I can't be there. Well, that's okay. My friend Carrie's helping me out. She's been spending a lot of time over here. Well, that's good. Um, you're supposed to let me know, but uh, I should be out of here uh, in about a week. I'm not really sure. Okay. Well, I love you. I love you, too. All right. Bye. Cheaters agents call off any further inquiries after compiling a mountain of evidence. Coming up, the confrontation. With substantial evidence of the affair, Cheater shows John the validity of his initial concerns. Deeply troubled by the potential findings, John prepares for his worst fear. John, thanks for being here tonight. John, the reason that we needed for you to come with us this evening is that our detectives have done the work that you've asked us to do, and we have compiled some information, and we thought it was important for you to see the surveillance. Are you ready to take a look at that now? Sure. John, on this day of the investigation, our detectives were outside of Bella's place of employment. She was observed leaving, and after waiting outside for a brief period of time, was picked up by a gentleman driving a pickup truck. 
Our detectives followed them until they arrived at your home. They were observed going inside. Didn't spend much time in there. They did get your dogs. Everyone piled back into the truck. And they traveled to a park. After spending some time at the park, they load back into the truck where this gentleman drops them off at your home. Bella turns to go into the house. She does turn and give this gentleman a friendly hug. On this day of the investigation, our detective was outside your home on this evening. The same gentleman was observed arriving at your house. He's greeted at the door by Bella. As they walk to the truck, it does appear that they're holding hands. They leave and are followed to a restaurant. And at this particular time, Bella does lean in give this gentleman a kiss on the side of the neck.
I'm five months pregnant and you decide to run off to rehab then. That's the yeah. best time to do it. Oh yeah, this has been going on for six months. I don't even think it's yours. How about that? How do you feel about that? Because That's right, cool. yeah. care of it. Yeah, it didn't work out. That's right. He's the one who's been taking care of me while you've been in rehab, while you run off. That's right. I'm going to get my straight. I won't be drinking anymore. You're I'll find someone better than you. That's right. I'm Whatever. Get... I'm the best you're ever going to get, and I'm leaving you. This is it. Oh, you're leaving and me. And what is this bull? I see what how you really feel. Crap? I, don't I see how you really feel about me. You put him in this situation. You brought him into what this. What about me? What do you... That seems to be the me. question. Maybe you should have been thinking about this, huh? Before you had sex with this guy. Maybe you should have, you know, found out who he was. He loved me. He didn't love me. I loved you. You don't love me. You love drinking and getting drunk and doing your thing. That's why I'm in out. rehab. That's why I volunteered to go to rehab. Because I love weeks. alcohol so much. For two much. weeks. That's a pacifier. That was to pacify me. Well, oh. it's a little too late. Okay. All right. Well, fine. It's just Where too late. Where are they taking him? I'm, I'm in the jail. I'm going with him. That's where criminals go. I'm go Excuse me. Yeah, follow Excuse your boyfriend. Me. I'm going with him. Excuse me. I am going with this man right here. things you know i'll find out if it is my child if it is i'll you know i'll help raise it if not then i'll move on by myself if that's the way she wants to be that's fine with me you know maybe this is closure for me maybe this will you know help me move on if that's who she wants to be with and if it makes her happy then you know i wish the best for her After the confrontation, John acknowledges his need for a counselor's advice. At the end of the show, Cheater shares his closing thoughts. But next, Cheaters presents Luis Hernandez, a previous suspect owning up to the responsibility of breaking his girlfriend's heart. Luis confesses his deceitful behavior in hopes of making amends. Luis Hernandez, age 26. Luis details how his experience on Cheaters changed his outlook on infidelity. Well, when the vans pulled up, uh, I, was, I was surprised, but at the same time, I couldn't believe it. You know, I wasn't so sure of the whole situation, what was going on. When I saw the cameras pull up, then I, then I, I knew that she was, she, you know, she had called cheaters and, you know, just to catch me on some act, you know, that I don't think it was right. Who's this? Yeah, that's your friend? I swear to God, she's my friend. Yeah, she's your friend? Where did you meet? Where did y'all meet at? At my job, she can't get rims. What? You're tripping. No, I am not tripping. I saw the tape. I saw everything. What tape? When I saw Alicia, I thought she was overreacting on the whole situation. She had told me we weren't together. She didn't want to be with me. And um, when she goes and does this, you know, it makes me realize that she still cares. You know, she was just testing me, I guess you know, about the whole situation. So when she goes and did, it, you know, that, did that, I was surprised, you know, but at the same time, you know, just made me realize that, you know, she, we weren't over with, you know, she still wants to be, she just wanted to make sure. I saw every time that she comes over there and every time, every time you're all hugging on her and then y'all go out to dinner or, or to, to, to a club. Oh my God. Do you know who I am? Did he tell you about his baby and his the baby's mom and, and yeah, what he said yes. about me? That we broke up three months and we're trying no, to work we, it out. Yeah, we're trying to work, yeah, with all the cards and the letters. What cards? All the letters that you've been writing me telling me you miss me and you want me back. I think that did mislead her, maybe. Uh, you know, with those three months, I gave her some letters saying how I felt about her relationship. And maybe that misled her. But her telling me, I don't want to be with you, stuff like that made me kind of realize that it's over. So I try to move on with my life and her doing her stuff, me doing my own. And, you know, um, this person, you know, we just met. And uh, yes, we did go out one time and yes, we did kiss. 
But it's not, I, in my eyes, it wasn't none of her business because really she was telling me she didn't want to be with me. You're such a good liar. You're a good liar. And you even believe yourself. That's sad. You need to go get help. That's why I don't want to do anything with you, kiss you, sleep you, because I don't want to get any diseases from you, Lewis. The possibilities of me and Alicia getting back together, I think it all involves in her forgiving me for whatever I've done. And for me, you know, become a better person in that way. You know, make her realize that I don't, I, I, that ain't me. I don't want to do that to her. I love her and I want to be with her. She's a mother of my kid. And it's just not right to me. I want to change for her. And I, I want to show her that, that I'm the one for her and she's the one for me. doubt in his mind, John Belzik affirms that his marriage can never recover from this type of indiscretion. Ready for a new chapter in his life, John vows to support his unborn child. That is, only if thorough DNA testing proves that he is indeed the father. In a diplomatic tone, Bella Belzik says that John is not entirely to blame for the demise of their relationship. Understanding that it's too late to reconcile her marriage, Mrs. Belzik said she will cooperate with John regarding visitation rights. Mrs. Belzik's companion could not be reached for comment. Assessed as a flight risk by the courts, he was denied bail.